Welcome to the Central Community in Cleveland, Ohio. The Central Community was the first place to have housing projects in Cleveland, Ohio in the 1930s, where it housed several families, even families from the war, white families. The Central Community wasn't always predominantly black. It wasn't until the 1960s when the Central Community became majority African American due to the effects of redlining. Forcing African Americans of low income all in one community. Denied of housing and business loans. The same housing and business loans was given to the whites, creating subsidized housing. Also creating the stigma, suburbs versus the project. The highest form of structured racism. The highest form of structured racism was placed on the central community. From our school systems, to the way we eat, our infant mortality rate, the effects of redlining increased the violence, stripped us of all our resources in the central community and became a violent place. But before the violence, central birth legends, such as Langston Hughes, the brothers, Carl and Lewis Stokes, Jesse Owens, Lonnie Burton, Frank Jackson, and Dwayne Brody, and several more. Fast forward to 2020, we become one of the most violent communities in America, making the central community the only community in Cleveland, Ohio, without a grocery store. With the recent closing of Jane Addams, the central community only has one high school, East Tech, forcing packed classrooms and higher dropout rates, exactly what the government planned to do with Redline. But with the energy from some young ambitious residents, and some community organizations, such as Environmental Health Watch, FAIR, Neighborhood Connection, Central Ambassadors, Sisters of Charity, our CDC, Burton Bell and Carr, and the King Kennedy's Boys and Girls Club, Little Africa, Friendly Inn, all working together to eradicate structured racism. Let's head down to Carver Park area to talk to Alicia Corpman. Hey guys, my name is Alicia Corpening and I'm the founder of Feed the Soul Cleveland. Um, Feed the Soul was founded back in March of 2020, so we are a fresh organization. Um, we have been running for about six months and our focus is home deliveries. So we collaborate with different organizations like Garden Valley Neighborhood House um, to actually provide different food services. So we pick up food from their location and we do it, we drop it off door to door to families. Um, Feed the Soul, Heart and Soul started right here in the central neighborhood. Um, our first programming started in Friendly Inn um, and we started with the children and servicing the families of the youth program, which I used to work for. Um, we collaborate with organizations like Create Art Not Violence, from servicing just a few families to over 500 families per month. So our focus will forever be and has always been the people and building community and longevity and sustainable relationships with inside of our community. So I welcome you all. I thank HFFI and every other organization who has supported Feed the Soul in our growing or who have collaborated or partnered with us. Um, in the past, currently, and even in the future. So again, my name is Alicia Corpening, and I thank you all for having me right here in the heart of Cleveland, which is the Central Community. Richard Starr, born and raised in Central Community, King Kitty Neighborhood Housing. I currently work as the Boys and Girls Club of Northeast Ohio, serving in the role as Club Athletic Director overseeing King Kitty East Tech Teen Center, as well as 14 athletic programs at 14 different sites. Um, I've been and I have the privilege of working in the community ever since I was a child, born and raised here in the Central Community, which is pivotal in my role. Some of the things that I like to do is mentor youth from ages 6 to 18 years old and further there. Um, something that I understood that I needed when I was a kid was someone to be there and more other people than just my parents. Um, my mom raised me as a single parent household. 
Um, second oldest of six children, she did as best as she could, but I just needed that extra male guidance to help me get to the next level in life, in which I went and sought out that in different forms. Rather, it was good or negative, I was seeking that mentorship, which ultimately developed me into being the person I am. Um, I am proud to say I am a graduate of East Technical High School, graduate of Ball and Wallace University, as well as currently pursuing my Master's in Business Administrator at Ball and Wallace University with an expected graduation of spring um, 2021. Some of the things that I'm so proud of, even through this un unprecedented times during this COVID and pandemic, is the fact that we've been able to partner with the Greater Cleveland Food Bank to distribute food produce boxes each and every other Wednesday started this past May 20th up until now on which we've been able to give out 400 boxes of 30 pounds of produce and each box is contain lettuce, celery, carrots, vegetables, um, fruits, oranges, the whole nine that you need. Um, it was great just to see that parents as well as residents and family members come out and receive the produce but also just have my friends get involved and work together and see the importance of giving back. Imagine just being able to have 400 boxes of produce and you have lines of people where you're passing out masks, where you're passing out food. During this time, people lost their jobs. When you lose jobs, you have to think about the fact that now you don't have that extra income coming in, but you know it's important that you have to eat every day. So we've been able to provide a healthy option, which is important because in a central neighborhood, there's not that many grocery stores. There are not even many that provide food for us or options for us. So it was important for us as community leaders and stakeholders to understand the importance of giving back in our community and making sure we be the voice for the voiceless people. Um, if someone was to ask me, like, yo, Richard, what do you think about um, grocery stores? First thing I would think of, like, yo, I like to go to grocery stores because I like to eat. But the second thought is, do everyone have that same mindset or also have that same option? Meaning, if you think about our community and where we live at, we don't have the option to go to a grocery store within our community, which changes our spectrum of what's offered for us. Meaning, once you take our grocery store away, the one that was here, Dave's, that was on 40th and Quincy, it changed a lot. You think about a lot of residents who relied on that grocery store. Even though some said the prices were high, but at the end of the day, you had a place that you can get some stuff. We have multiple holidays throughout the summer. We have times where we need to get food and Instead of being able to have the resources to travel to another grocery store or go out, people rely on their foot as the number one source of transportation. So being able to walk to a neighborhood right across the street from your house to get the things that you need for you and your family is important. But right now, that is a major problem. It's a concern for our residents, as well as myself, not being able to find the um, quality of food or the options available of having a grocery store in our community. When you look at the city of Cleveland, most of our wards do have grocery stores. But right now, we really don't have not a main big grocery store within our ward. And it's sadding, and it's frightening, and it's horrible because you have to then figure out who are not getting the services that they need because they possibly don't have that transportation just to get the food they need. So they eat whatever they can and do the best they can. In our community, we raise off survival, and we're going to continue to survive, but we're going to make sure we push the envelope and make sure that we do what we can take to ensure that we get some resources such as a grocery store in our community. I am with Free Thinker Movement. I am with Walt. Keep up the great work. I'm proud of you, man. Change is coming. Be the change that we must want to see. Thank you. We just heard all of the amazing work community leader and director of the Boys and Girls Club, Richard Starr, is doing. Now let's head to the oldest barbershop in the central community, El Dorado's. Talk to his owner, Jerome Cooper, AKA Boss, on how the departure of the community's only grocery store, Dave's, affected not only the community, but the barbershop as well. For one, I mean, Dave's even Plaza, it kind of, some people, like you say, that probably never knew the barbershop was here unless they went to Dave's. Just like the hair store. So when the, when the grocery store was there, it benefited the community as well as the plaza. You know what I'm saying? Because people go to Dave's and then they might have to go in the hair store to get something. Or they might have a little child or somebody that want to come here get a, get a haircut. You know, like I say, and by just not, even with Dave's got that little, that van that come around all the time. But like the, this man came in the other day was saying that, they think about cutting that out because they don't get enough people riding now. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's hurting the community real bad, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's head down on Alfway to talk to the youth advocate and the founder of Community Cleanup, Demetrius Carter. Yo, I'm Demetrius Carter. I'm a father.
father, community leader, activist, artist, and most importantly, a down the way survivor. I feel like in a central community with them not having a grocery store, not only do we not have that chance to connect in one place where we can go shop and get our food, but we don't have that, that source of fresh fruit, that source of fresh vegetables, nice water, and another like multiple multiple things that we just can't get into. Instead, we gotta go to like a lot of the sugary beverages. We gotta go into the artificial foods, the ones with the preservatives in it. And that don't make us, that don't push us anywhere further. So we've been very limited without a grocery store. I know with a grocery store in the community, we definitely gonna be able to tap into a lot more things. So, the central community being without a grocery store for me is an unfortunate situation um, for all ages, mainly our seniors. Um, it's very hard for seniors to get back and forth to get their groceries. To expect them to be able to have transportation or maybe public transportation to get them to and fro um, is a very uh, just a sad situation to even think about also for just all ages our teens um with jobs middle age with jobs our, our community lost a lot of different jobs in that situation and it just it just makes a sour spot in the central community not having a grocery store um you never know what time day or night you may need something from the store and, and if you can't get there in a timely fashion for somewhere right in our community, it, it, it's, it's very unfortunate and it's sad to say because for many, many years we had one and now we don't. They got um, the medical thing picking us up when they want that money to take us to the doctor. She walked. We gotta walk. She walked. We walked. Miss Baby, that's a long time. Yeah. I almost died. It was hot too. Oh, yeah, I remember that day. That and was a that That was true. And I like, had the shopping cart. And Cop like, said, got his old E in his hand. Can you help me? Most of us walk. Most of us uh, got like you know. That's some people got uh, transportation, like you know, relatives. But other than that, don't have like, no way of getting there. We ain't got no way to get there. And then it's so sad they took. They did have transportation. You up there to get transportation, and that only lasts for a month till they got on their feet. Right. Then they say fuck us. Yeah. Let them get to the store the best way they can. Right. And someone and there's and there's elderly over around here. So what yeah. are they supposed to do? Like yeah. they supposed cry. to be first priority, matter of fact. Right. Especially the ones that've been down here for years. Like my mom, for instance. She been down here for years. Where, where the same order yet, man? See them like that. Somebody moved out. They quit to go in there and fish their apartment up. But what about us? The ones that's been down here. down here forever. Y'all ain't yeah. doing nothing. That's the Everything why in my apartment, I fix myself. I got to Google it. And that's the reason why they be backed up on that stuff. Backed up. They do it when you call in for them to do it. Hey, ain't right. Ain't that right, Mom? Yeah. You can be down here forever. Yeah. As soon as you Lord, turn around, yeah. a person moves out. They go on to get their shit. My daughter takes us to the I store. I asked her how she gets to the store. My daughter takes us to the store. No, right. And she That's just how got another car, though. And how long you been standing in this room? Oh, my God. It's, oh, Lord. It's been so Between long. Between here and there, almost been, 40 I years. I was over here for over at least 20-something years. In our case, I was over there at least 20-something years. So that's over 40, 40, years, 40 years altogether, yeah, 40, 50 years. Yeah, I've been for a long time. Yeah. She was there before me. And I, I remember years. when Seymour was up there. I used to, yeah. I used to walk up there to Seymour, you know? And I used to cash my check and stuff up there, you know? And, and shop, you know? And when we was up, and that was it, you know? We had to get us a car in order for us to get to the school. And then Dave came down, but then they wanted him leaving. The only notice we got was something on the window. That's it. But who, but hey, who, you know, who's gonna see that though? I mean, they, there's no, there was no warning or nothing. But there's notice on the window.
We're moving. And look where they took it to. And that's it. Way up there. Tell me about it. Hey, y'all take days way up there. Now, come on. Tell they me even got the one up pain. Right. They didn't just come on now. Come on. 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 I don't stay down here anymore. But I be down here, and my sister stay down here. Yeah. I have her go try to take yes, care yeah. of where she needs to go. Right. But it said the fire is coming. And everybody in this in this vicinity needs to buy not to. Yeah, I did it, so we do got the A-Rab selling us bad meat. $14 for a steak and all. You better cook it that day. We got a steak and all. We got a steak and all. We got a steak and all. Because there's too much crime going on down here. Ain't that what it's going on? It's too much crime going down here right now. We got a burn house to be high. Ain't the dollar store of A-Rab selling bad meat. You better cook it that day. Life is too short. $14. Life is too short. We're not on the bad meat. All they stuff have is stuff over there. It's fine. Get a uh, crust, big, you need a crust pineapple pop. That stuff is fine and juice. And they still got to sit on the shelf. That's why my son always say, Ma, you better check your date. And he don't want to know we are black people. We just ask him for somewhere to sit. You know what, that's though? It. If we get together, we can really shut them down for real. So can. Then what they're going to do? That's the problem. That's the problem. We can shut them down. That's the problem. They be doing all bunch of other stuff that they don't need to be doing. Don't put it on the camera, but you know what I mean. Right. Stop with that. We got to stick it down. Ain't nobody better than me. Right. You know what I'm saying? I know that's right. right. You, you got, got, got the same blood. blood. Yeah. Your blood bleeds the same blood I bleed. Really? Yes, man. You breathe the same air I bleed. Yeah. 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 You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. We all human. Yeah. It don't matter what you got. Right. We don't care about that. Because you know what? That takes. AJ. It only takes one second for the job. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be saying that all the time. Yeah. 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 The Lord give it and the Lord take it away. Take it away. You can be here today and go on the moon. You can be here today and go on tomorrow. AJ! Believe in God. They give us the strength to pour together. You got to pour together. You got my man. Man, I believe in God. Man. You take a picture? I believe in the Lord. Because these kids all the way up and say thank you, God, for another day. Yes. That's the problem. We gotta teach them. We gotta teach them. We gotta teach them. Yeah, that's why I'm saying that. Y'all know these turf wars been going on for a long, long time. You know, this turf wars have been going on for a long, long, long time. Hundreds and hundreds of years. Yes, it is. 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 Yes, it is.
But it's not our fault. Look at our options. Can we eat? With crazy statistics like over 50% of the central community make less than $10,000 a year, over 60% of the central community don't own transportation. <laughs>